there is something to be said about food as medicine. So food um, really, really provides a lot of the nutrients that, that we need um, to maintain our bodies. Um, so we will go into the different types of food next, along with um, also what they're providing for you. So the goal is really, you know, we are talking about what diet is the best. And, and the shift really is to whole foods. What are whole foods? Now, whole foods is, is shifting from eating processed foods, meaning that there, there is a process going on where all the nutrients are being taken out. So with white bread, um, what happens is it is stripped from all the nutrients that you need. White rice is stripped from the nutrients. So it, it, it's not really providing as much nutrients as you can get. Um, so whole foods are as close to their natural state as you can find, meaning that they're unprocessed or without a label or without a barcode. So the easiest way to find what a whole food is, you go into a grocery store and any grocery store, if it's got a barcode label on it, it is unlikely to be a whole food. Um, if there's no barcode labels, you're pretty safe eating it. Um, why do we want to eat whole foods? They are more nutrient dense, meaning they have a higher ratio of vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients to calories. And these phytonutrients help to, um, to reduce inflammation. So um, if I had to pick a diet, um, that I would recommend uh, for this group for um, sarcoidosis patients, if, if we once again think back at um, uh, what's happening in sarcoidosis, is it's an inflammatory process. So um, I would choose the anti-inflammatory diet as the big um, header. So if, if you wanted to learn something, I, I would choose that. And now what is the anti-inflammatory diet composed of? It's composed of 40 to 50% of healthy carbs, which are low uh, glycemic, less refined and less processed. Now I've introduced the word low glycemic there. What that means is that they do not um, make your blood sugar jump as fast. Um, they're uh, carbs that um, have a combination of maybe fiber with them. And um, that way they won't make that insulin spike. Um, it also includes 30% good fats and unsaturated fats. And then 20% protein sourced mostly from vegetable protein, um, including beans, but then also fish protein. And your inflammatory foods, you really want to limit to one serving a day. So the main inflammatory foods are dairy, uh, gluten, uh, uh, soy, uh, peanuts, and corn, um, corn products. And if you think about um, meat um, and you think about, for example, um, beef, cows are fed um, corn mostly to plump them up. So if you're eating a burger, you're actually eating corn as well, which is, you know, this double inflammatory process. And, um, and in inflammation, you know, th th these foods are gonna cause an immune response and that's what we don't want to do. We do not want to have an um, immune response. Um, so uh, the anti-inflammatory diet is a pyramid. So when you look at the bottom of the pyramid, this is where we want to center our, um, our intake is towards the bottom. We're looking at vegetables, so we wanna eat four to five vegetables a day, fruits maybe three or four a day. Um, I would love for you to put in how many um, fruits or vegetables you have eaten today. Um, you can put that in the Q&A uh, or you can put it in uh, wave a hand, tell me if you have eaten any fruits or vegetables today. Um, uh, let me know. Uh, then after the fruits and vegetables, a main component is the whole, um, okay, we've got some raised hands. I'm glad somebody's eating some fruits and vegetables. Wonderful. Um, Teresa, tell me how many um, fruits and vegetables did you eat today? Or tell me what you ate today. Um, yeah, we're getting some good questions over here and we're going to get to these. Uh, so um, the whole and cracked grains, the pastas, the beans and legumes, and then the healthy fats. Um, so we are going to break down this pyramid and I'm going to go over um, some prime things that you can um, 
take out of this anti-inflammatory pyramid and literally start eating tomorrow to decrease inflammation. So let's get started with vegetables. Um, when we talk about vegetables, there are so many vegetables we can eat. What you want to do is you really want to get four to five cooked vegetables or raw vegetables a day. Uh, the more variety, the better. The more colors, the better. Uh, the reason for that is because each of these vegetables does something different. Um, you know, you, you really want to have a nice combination of different dark leafy greens. Um, each of them has different vitamins and minerals and um, things in them. So I, I know people who will just eat kale all week long because they think they're doing the right, right thing. But really what I want to advise you is to increase increase the um, biodiversity of the vegetables you eat. So, you know, sometimes maybe eat some kale. Um, if you're making a salad, put in both kale and maybe spinach. If you like arugula, throw in some arugula. In fact, I would just throw all of this into one bowl and eat it. And that's going to be your best meal ever because you are picking up, you know, different nutrients from all these different vegetables. You're going to get um, the carotenoids from the carrots, you know, you're going to get um, uh, things from the beets that are great to increase blood flow to your muscles. Uh, let, let's just talk about broccoli for a minute. Um, you know, this, this little mini tree, um, th this is definitely a power food. And if you, if you don't like broccoli, there is a solution for that. You can eat broccoli sprouts, which are not as... Um, uh, ha have a little bit lighter taste to it, but really um, contain these ingredients and uh, phytonutrients and um, sulfurin, they're called sulfuranines, um, which actually are, are great to prevent against breast cancer. Uh, so then we move on to the fruits. We do have a definite variety of fruits. Um, the ones that obviously are highly recommended are any of the berries. The berries are very high in nutrients and they're also lower calories. They are great as a snack food because, you know, you, you can eat a cup full of berries and um, you feel like you've been snacking. Um, you also are gaining fiber here. Um, a lot of these um, foods have fiber. So rather than having a glass of orange juice in the morning, you are much better off having the actual orange because that orange juice glass is going to actually spike your insulin, cause inflammation, as opposed to if you ate the orange because the fiber slows down that uh, spike. Um, and then also an apple a day we know keeps the doctor away. So I don't know how many people are um, eating their apple a day. I, I, I used to have one colleague who would eat an apple every day for lunch. Actually, that was his lunch. That's all he ate for lunch. Um, and and I, I think he's a healthy 70 now. So um, it works. Uh, now, I knew I was going to get some questions on the nightshades. So I prepared this for you because last time as we've talked, Nightshades is a question for people because there has been um, some, some information in the past that has talked about how they might cause inflammation. Um, there is a, a compound in them called um, alkaloids, and this is a nitrogen-containing substance, um, which is in nightshades. And um, some experts believe that these could possibly contribute to uh, leaky gut. And when your gut gets leaky, then um, it can cause inflammation to uh, go out from the gut into the rest of the body. So um, the, the thing about nightshades is the evidence is um, very limited and the research, it, it really needs to be studied more. Um, so the way I would recommend you to, um, to think about nightshades is, is to take one nightshade and really see how it um, reacts in your body before you eliminate it. And the reason I say that is because all of these foods that we're looking at here actually have a lot more health benefits than you would think. Um, tomatoes, um, uh, 
very good source of vitamin A and C. They also contain lycopene. They are a high source of lycopene. Um, and, and, and they actually can um, lower the risk of um, some severe chronic diseases and they can lower inflammation. So the question is, does it really work in your body? Um, cooked tomatoes even actually have more lycopene in them. So um, doing a good combination of eating both maybe uh, raw tomatoes in a salad and cooked tomatoes in a tomato sauce. Um, if you don't want to do tomatoes, you can alternate to get um, that vitamin C by adding um, citrus fruits, um, but th there are some benefits to it. Um, and just because you're allergic to, or you think you're allergic to one nightshade, you might not be to another. So you might want to try it. I mean, if you are eating potatoes, it is highly, um, and you're eating French fries, it is, it is highly unlikely that you, you are um, uh, having a problem with these. Um, but with everything, you have to try it. You have to see how your body feels. Um, I do want to say that um, peppers also, these peppers over here contain a high amount of vitamin C. Um, they, um, and vitamin C is also helpful for absorbing iron. Um, eggplants are a good source of dietary fiber. Uh, and eating, um, you can uh, have um, regular bowel movements with that and can also uh, reduce your uh, risk of heart disease. Uh, potatoes contain a fair amount of potassium, vitamin B6, and manganese. So I would say um, for the most part, um, there's more nutrients and benefits in the nightshades, and many people are actually encouraged to eat them. Um, but if you, if you do have a sensitivity, then of course don't eat them. But um, I would say try them individually at first and for maybe a week and see how your body feels. Um, now we go on to the whole grains and cracked grains because um, we, you know, we, we do need to get some grains in there. So what are the, the high players? Like what are the good ones that we really want to get in there? So oatmeal, brown rice, whole wheat bread, um, and anything that's unrefined uh, tends to be higher in fiber and this way will help with inflammation. So steel cut oats. So over here we have steel cut oats. These are a little bit thicker than your usual oatmeal. So if you're going and buying uh, those sugary quicker oat packets that you stick in the microwave and you pour water on, you're, you're once again still increasing inflammation. So something you can do is, um, and this is great to do in the, um, in the fall, I love to do this in the winter, is um, make a batch of steel cut oats for the week. Um, you can make it in a pot. Uh, I would even suggest adding some um, flax seeds or um, uh, hemp seeds to it um, and then uh, put it into your, you know, your container and have five servings of this uh, steel cut oats for the week. Top it off with some berries, um, you know, some maybe almond slivers and you've got a great meal there for breakfast. And this will keep you full um, for, for your morning. Um, also other foods, um, you might want to uh, include buckwheat seeds. Um, surprisingly, buckwheat is actually gluten-free, even though it has the word wheat in it. But buckwheats are really good because they're nutrient dense, they're packed with magnesium, copper, phosphorus, iron, B vitamins, and uh, fiber. So that's, that's a really good gluten-free um, grain to actually have. Uh, bulgur wheat is another good one that um, it's usually seen in Middle Eastern cuisine. Um, it's, um, we see it sometimes if you go to a Middle Eastern restaurant, you get tabbouleh. Um, it's prepared very similar to the way you prepare rice, but the um, texture is maybe a little bit different. And it is also packed with magnesium. So for some of you who have a little bit um, challenge with sleeping, um, you know, magnesium really helps with that. So any of these foods that are high in magnesium rather than, you know, popping a pill to fall asleep, uh, you know, consider adding them to your dinner. Uh, also quinoa. Quinoa is one of my favorites. Um, quinoa is a whole protein, which, um, you know, when we were talking earlier back about um, all the amino acids, um, this has all nine amino acids. So, uh, this is a great one to have. And then you have your brown rice and your um, whole wheat pasta over as opposed to your white rice. Um, 
So that's a good choice. And I'm just looking at the time and I wanna make sure that I give you guys enough time to get your questions answered. So let me move along here because I still have some more things I wanna show you. So beans and legumes, um, we have black beans, we have kidney beans, we have lentil beans, we have peas. These are all really good sources of uh, both protein and foods for the anti-inflammatory diet. Um, you have many choices here because not only that, but they provide you fiber and they also provide you protein. So this is a great source for that. Um, whole soy foods. Do not be afraid to eat soy. Um, you know, and, and I would say this as eat um, real soy or whole soy foods, um, not your soy hot dogs, not your soy chicken nuggets. I'm talking about edamame, tempeh, um, uh, GMO free uh, tofu and soy milk. Um, and the, re the reason um, I, I highly recommend eating soy for many people is that um, soy intake in studies has been shown to uh, lower the circulating levels of inflammatory markers. And we're talking about the interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor, all these um, things that cause inflammation in the in inflammatory um, cascades, so the pivotal cytokines. It actually, um, in studies, was shown to lower these levels. Um, it also helps to um, improve heart, um, heart health by removing um, saponins from the body. Um, th these are um, products that um, are removed with the bile acids, which we want to um, remove from our body as an ex excretory process. They're also really good for uh, bone health. It's a good source of calcium. And, um, you, you know, as also as a breast cancer specialist, I recommend soy to my breast cancer patients because it actually decreases your risk of breast cancer. And with one in eight women um, having breast cancer, this is a great um, easy food to add to decrease your risk. Um, healthy fats. So now let's get into the fats. Um, not all fat is bad but we do want to eat the right kind of fat. So here we've got some avocados are a great choice, um, olives, uh, olive oil, and then of course the seeds um, and nuts. Um, we want to stay away from the pro-inflammatory fats and those are the ones that you know are saturated, trans fats, um, artificial preservatives, pesticides, and the reason is because they cause um, oxidative stress, they cause um, increased free radicals, and then they cause uh, chronic inflammatory conditions and increased immune response. So sources, as we see here in these pictures, you, you can also do chia seeds, walnuts, seaweed, hemp seeds, flax seed, um, edamame, kidney beans, Brussels sprouts, all sources of healthy fats. Um, and they also have omega-3s, the healthy fats. The ones we want are omega-3 rich as opposed to omega-6. Um, the SAD diet or the standard American diet is high in omega-6 pro-inflammatory fat, whereas the anti-inflammatory or these foods are higher in omega-3. So we really want omega-3s. And omega-3s um, are good if you um, to lower your blood pressure. It's also good to uh, lower triglycerides. They slow the development of plaques in your body. Um, they're important for brain function and for cognitive health. So as we age, this is really important that we're eating omega-3s to um, help prevent um, cognitive decline. Um, and then it comes to fish and seafood. So what, what are the big players for, um, if you're going to choose to eat fish, um, we want the fish that are high in omega-3s. Um, these include salmon, tuna, sardines, and mackerel. But the key point here is you really only need to eat two servings of fish a week, okay? And that's a total of six to eight ounces. So um, when you think of eating meat or you think of eating um, uh, fish, Think of them now more as condiments as opposed to your main meal. So when you're putting your plate together, your, your majority of your plate, I would say half of it should be, if, if, you, if you divide a plate, half of it should be your vegetables, a quarter of it would be your grains, and then that little um, last quarter would be your um, fish or your meat or um, maybe uh, your uh, fat, something like that, but really you should be 
filling your, your plate up more um, with the vegetables. Um, another thing I want to mention as a beverage choice is um, tea. Need, we need to start drinking a little bit more tea. Um, there are so many different kinds of tea available. You have black tea, green tea, peppermint tea. Um, tea is just full of flavonoids that help reduce inflammation. So if you are um, somebody who likes to have something that's flavored, um, you know, just making a um, tea is a great choice. You can make it into an iced tea minus the sugar. There's some really great teas on the market now because they've included other dried fruits have really good um, flavor in them that you won't need the sugar. Um, and uh, green tea specifically has a um, chemical in it known as epigalactocatin uh, epigalacto 3-galate. You don't need to know the name of it, but basically this suppresses inflammation and it blocks the pro-inflammatory pathways to guard your heart and ultimately prevent against cardiovascular disease. It also prevents against um, breast cancer once again and any other inflammatory process, which we know all our chronic diseases start with an inflammatory process. So um, adding green tea to your day is a great way um, to um, start something that's really easy. And then let's see, now healthy herbs and spices. Let's talk about these because this is the way I recommend you add flavor to your food. Um, garlic, as we know up here, it contains sulfur compounds and that is rich in vitamin C, B6, magne manganese, and garlic can um, actually boost the immune system. So the, the little garlic pods over here, if you want to throw them into your uh, pasta sauce or you want to throw them into your whatever, you know, um, you know, maybe you're making asparagus and you make, um, you flavor them with some garlic, that would be wonderful. Uh, ginger also is um, really important. Um, it has really high anti-inflammatory effects. It can help fight infections. So um, if you're somebody who gets, you know, a lot of infections, you might want to consider adding ginger to your diet. Um, it's also good for chronic indigestion. So for, for individuals who, you know, might have a little bit of a reflux going on, you know, adding ginger to your food or maybe even making a fresh ginger tea from the actual ginger. Um, would be great. Uh, turmeric, um, I know everybody has heard about turmeric by now, um, that yellow powder you see, but I wanted to show you a picture of it over here. Um, that's what it actually looks like. Um, and it, this is a very, very powerful anti-inflammatory. Um, and what it does is it contains curcuminoids. And this actually matches the um, anti-inflammatory um, effect of some drugs. That's how powerful it is that it, it, it can go head to head with some of the anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, and what it does is it blocks NFKB, which plays the role in chronic diseases and fights inflammation at the molecular level. Um, it, uh, it's a potent antioxidant. It can neutralize the free radicals and it also boosts something called brain-derived neurotropic factor. And this was associated with improved brain function and lowering the risk of brain disease and even improving memory. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit later how you can add turmeric to your day. But um, And then cinnamon. Cinnamon is also another underrated thing that we should just be pouring cinnamon on, on everything. Um, this contains a high amount of polyphenol antioxidants, very potent anti-inflammatory effects. Um, you know, uh, rather than adding sugar to your tea and coffee, consider pouring a, uh, putting a little bit of cinnamon powder over it. Instead of adding sugar to your um, desserts, maybe put some cinnamon on it. One of the um, easiest recipes that I have seen, because I don't even think I can call it a recipe, is literally taking sliced, um, taking slices of oranges and sprinkling a little bit of cinnamon on there. Um, that, that's actually something they do in Morocco and I will tell you it tastes delicious. Um, so really um, adding um, herbs and spices, cilantro, another good one um, that can help reduce inflammation um, by suppressing the uh, free radical production. 
Um, and then we don't want to forget about our healthy sweets. So when I mentioned dark chocolate, it's okay to eat dark chocolate once in a while, you know, but how much do you eat? You eat one to two ounces. So that is essentially one little square. Um, it's a powerful source of antioxidants. It raises um, HDL. It protects against LDL, fights free radicals, and it uh, plays a role in cancer prevention. Um, some of the ones you might want to consider that, that you're familiar with is like Giardelli in 92% or maybe Lint in 90 or 99% extra dark. Um, you can also make desserts um, from healthier foods. In the top right here, I have a um, uh, chocolate avocado mousse made, meaning that I've added um, you know, some chocolate to it, some cocoa powder, and made it creamy by adding a good fat, that's avocado. Um, and the lower right is um, what I call an energy ball that I have made um, with literally taking any power ingredient. I think I have another picture of that coming up, show you what actually went in it. But um, making something just as simple as this, as opposed to buying your granola bars, will um, save you in those sugars, those fats, and all those unnecessary ingredients. So the question is, what is in my kitchen? Um, I, I ran over before I started this presentation. I'm like, let me take a picture of my fridge. It's not looking the best, but, but I am going to share it with you. Um, you know, I, it's, it's mostly composed of fruits and vegetables. And in the top is a bunch of different nuts um, that I throw on to, you know, maybe a salad, whatever I'm cooking. But it's, it's all the colors, you know, of the rainbow and just eating a big, healthy variety. When I make a salad, this is um, some greens actually from my garden um, where I like to incorporate as many greens as possible because then I know I'm not missing out on any of the micronutrients. Um, and then one of the other things I was mentioning earlier is um, microgreens. Microgreens is, is another powerhouse um, food. You just, you know, there's just so many nutrients in there that you can use it, um, you know, on top of your soups, put it inside a sandwich, and you're, you're really going to get quite a bit of nutrients. Now, coming back to that turmeric that I was talking about, what I love to do is I make this, um, I make turmeric ice cubes, and it's a combination of lemon, um, turmeric, uh, black pepper, because black pepper actually enhances the effect of turmeric, and um, water, and I freeze these ice cubes, and um, you know, every day in my water bottle, I just throw a couple of these in, and by you know, the end of the week, I've I've had such a great dose of um, anti-inflammatory compounds. Um, super easy to do; takes less than five minutes to prepare, and you're good. So I wanted to show you that cooking and eating at home is really not that difficult. These are four dishes that I have produced in less than. 30 minutes. So the, um, the top is the ingredient, the bottom is what it became. So on the left, I've made a quinoa. Uh, and this is actually from a um, full of anti-inflammatory ingredients specifically because we've got the beans, we've got the tomatoes, we've got the uh, walnuts there, um, good olive oil, um, and then quinoa is a complete protein and, and just really made a nice quinoa peel off there and served it with some um, oven baked tofu. Uh, the second one is my ingredients for the um, energy balls if you wanted to try and make those, which is basically, you know, um, some oats, some uh, almond butter, a bunch of nuts and seeds, as many as I could put in there, rolled in coconut flakes. Um, mm -hmm. The third one over is a, um, uh, a really good um, Ayurvedic dish. It's called kitchari, and, and this is really a nice cleansing dish. It's a combination of um, using some lentils, some quinoa, some rice. Um, I added some cabbage in here, and um, all of this was cooked in one pot. And, and actually, this one took 12 minutes to make. That's how long the pot cooked. So super quick, easy ways to make food. On the right is a mushroom quinoa burger um, with some um, you know, healthy olive oil. Mushrooms are also another superfood, very um, healthy for you. 
um, full of stress relieving properties. So really it, it shouldn't be that difficult once you know what you can eat, how to combine foods. 